This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Opposition leader Bill Shorten says the federal government's budget fails Tasmania, putting a wedge between public and private schools. The state government has dismissed the claims, saying all Tasmanian schools will be better off and Mr Shorten doesn't have the figures to support his claims. The first stop of his Tassie tour, St Bridges Catholic Primary School. The Labor leader firm in pushing his party's latest views on the federal budget when it comes to Tasmania. I think it is completely dishonest of the Turnbull government to try and rip this community apart and pit people who choose to send their children to a government school against children uh, who go to a Catholic parish school. Mr Shorten claiming the federal government has betrayed the Tasmanian community, reigniting a divide between public and private education. Also saying the distribution of Gonski 2.0 funding is out of touch. You can't cut $22 billion and say that over the next 10 years schools are going to benefit. Full stop. That idea was promptly squashed by the state government. Mr Rockliffe saying every student in the Catholic sector will in fact receive more funding per student and that all schools benefit from the latest deal. In Tasmania, there's going to be growth. More funding, almost $200 million more, will be going into Tasmanian schools over the next 10 years. In all the millions and billions talk today, it was noted Mr Shorten's mission was carried out without any state Labor members by his side, a move the state government has also labelled political. The state Labor Party should know that this is a fair Agonski. Uh, they're playing politics as well as Mr Shorten, uh, so I don't know if there's a split between federal Labor and state Labor on Gonski. Labor MHA Michelle O'Byrne brushed off that idea but did disclose where the state Labor Party sits. It's not OK to say there's a bit more than we're getting now and therefore we're happy. What we should be saying is no, we want Years 5 and 6 funded and then we will have a negotiation with you about how that continues into the future. Mr Shorten also slammed the government over the lack of Liberal member visits made to Tasmania since the budget was announced last Tuesday. But Minister Rockliffe says there's nothing in it and that the PM is on track to stop by the state for COAG. Mr Shorten needs to stop playing politics, uh, stop pretending. Jesse Gilmore, Southern Cross News. The state government is refusing to guarantee additional funding for paramedics in next week's state budget, despite Tasmania recording the worst ambulance response times in the country. Paramedics say resources are stretched to the limit and industrial action may be the only option. Several years working as a paramedic in Tasmania, Laura Heffer knows stresses are part of the job. But as emergency calls increase, the workforce has been struggling to keep up with a system she says is now in crisis. In the last few weeks, we have been experiencing an exceptionally high caseload within Tasmania. Um, Northern Region particularly have, have seen their resources just not match up to demand. The pressures highlighted in a new government services report, with Tasmania recording the worst ambulance response times in the country. 90% of first responding ambulances taking more than 26 minutes. The state's medium response time, 13 minutes. You see $12.1 million announced for a, a hospital at St Helens and $15 million for a hospital at Mersey, but who's going to take the patients out of those centres? It's us. We have, in fact, um, in the last year alone, put 30 more um, FTE positions of paramedics um, into our health system. The Health and Community Services Union says at a bare minimum an extra two crews are required in Hobart and an extra two crews in Launceston. But with little hope of any extra money in next week's state budget, Haksu believes industrial action may be the only option. Uh, when the budget gets delivered next week, Tasmanians will want to see that ambulance service gets the funding it needs to be there when we desperately need them to be there for all of us. While pre-budget measures are continuing to be rolled out with the Northern Economic Stimulus Package set to be extended statewide. We are allocating $60 million for uh, this effort. It will bring forward projects which councils have on the books. It will allow them to access interest-free loans to bring forward those projects. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. 
Heavy rain and flash flooding is expected to hit Tasmania tomorrow. The SES is mobilising resources across the state with the impact likely to be short and sharp. The first major weather event of the winter spell, a trough travelling from the east, is likely to bring big storms and potential danger. Residents, especially those in low-lying areas, should prepare. It's time to be storm and flood ready. Up to 80 millimetres of rain is expected in the northeast and northwest, along with strong wind gusts. The wildest weather will lash the coast between Smithton and Devonport. And they're likely to see heavy falls from the early morning through until the afternoon. Around 100 volunteers are currently on standby around the state. The SES has deployed sandbags and other equipment to the areas where the worst weather is expected. All northern river basins are on flood watch. Residents should watch out for damaged trees and power lines and be careful on the roads. We don't know what the conditions um, are like on the road underneath. There could be a significant debris or, you know, the road could have even collapsed. So we say do not do that. Hobart and the rest of the south will escape unscathed with only 10 to 20 millimetres of rain predicted for the region. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. A scathing report on Tassal's farming practices in Macquarie Harbour shows the company is at risk of losing its industry certification because of non-conforming to regulations. Environmental groups are calling for the state government to step up and enforce laws against the company. But Tassal says it's all an overreaction. In the spotlight again over Macquarie Harbour operations. Findings from an independent draft report from the Aquaculture Stewardship Council show the company isn't conforming to 19 standards, four of which are major. Including uh, creating a marine dead zone, um, breaching fish welfare standards, failing to provide autopsy reports to auditors and failing to deal effectively with public complaints. Environment Tasmania is calling on the state government to intervene, claiming the company is breaking the law and nothing's being done. The company isn't even meeting the bare minimum in their accreditation standards, which is just complying with the law. Uh, it's quite a damning result for Tassel's brand. Tassel has 90 days to rectify the issues presented in the report or it could risk losing the ASC stamp of approval for the two leases. The Greens are claiming the salmon industry is left unchecked under the state government, also criticising it for not enforcing fines that would stop breaches occurring in the first place. We don't know what's happening in the Minister's department about salmon farming. That's the problem. Uh, people are left to uh, try and join the dots without the information. Not only are we a strong supporter of sustainable growth in the industry, uh, we will regulate it strictly and expect all companies to abide by the law. In a statement, Tassel says the issues are the same it has been working to address since January. Tassel says it's a world leader in terms of marine stewardship and transparency and rejects Environment Tasmania's claims, saying that they're inaccurate. The report is out for public comment for 30 days. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Australia's oldest Navy ship, HMAS Darwin, made her entrance into Hobart this morning, a final visit before being decommissioned later this year. She has a special connection to Tasmania, holding the first Lady of the Fleet trophy, making her the most senior and experienced ship in the fleet. Making her final entrance into the harbour, HMAS Darwin has visited Tasmania nine times, but this is her last goodbye before being decommissioned later this year. The sh a ship is a ship, but it's having the people in it that makes it what it is, and Darwin's a very special ship, and it will be sad at the end of the year, yes. She has a special connection to Tasmania, holding the First Lady of the Fleet trophy, named after the first female to enlist in the Royal Australian Navy. A young girl called Nancy Bentley who had a snake bite and was brought on board a ship, but back in those days uh, females weren't allowed to be on ships, so it, they made her the first ever mem female member of the Australian Navy. Over the last 33 years she sailed the equivalent to 50 times around the globe, clocking over a million nautical miles in the Indian and Pacific Oceans and has been deployed to the Middle East and Timor. She's so capable and she handles incredibly uh, and the command team are really great as well. And she holds 180 crew who are planning on a weekend of R&R &R before leaving port on Monday morning. It's really nice to be home. Uh, I've not been able to sail into Hobart on a ship before and to 
you know, sailing on my first posting is just, it's so lucky. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. An event to acknowledge the work being done by Education Support Group, the Smith family, was held in Burnie today. The initiative, which received government funding for the first time last year, allows around 100 of Tasmania's most disadvantaged students to remain in education. Smith Family provides um, support to families through our scholarship program. Um, that scholarship program provides a small amount of financial support for the students, um, some support through the additional education programs, and we work really closely with schools. The group's Learning for Life scholarship program works with 19 schools across the state. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has closed lower for a third consecutive session as investors continue to dump banking stocks. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 10.9 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 74.34 US cents and 107.87 New Zealand cents. Well, in the TSL, Lauderdale wants to break its long drought at KG5 tomorrow when it faces a Glenorchy side still licking its wounds. Meanwhile, a handy pickup for Launceston has spoken about his impressions of the club and what it's like under coach Sam Lonigan. Launceston had big changes at the start of the season, a new coach in Sam Lonigan, while Ruller Kelly Mansfield stepped up from Deloraine in the NTFA. Six months in, he's expecting big things. Good teams uh, eventually over time, once they gel, get used to the program, uh, I think we'll be right there and about, so yeah, look out. With VFL experience, he's regarded as one of the more senior figures in the side. He says Lonigan's coaching style has been a welcome change. Traditionally probably hard coaches, um, they got the best out of me in a way where they drove me pretty hard, um, whether Sam's pretty much the other way, he gives a bit of flexibility to, um, to play how I want. The Blues face Hobart City Demons, a side with extraordinary belief after beating Clarence by a point. The coach credits a new game plan for the success. It's more of a mindset thing, you know, we get back to basics at training, we've changed the way we've trained, we touch the footies more, we're doing a lot more competitive stuff and it's resulted in two wins in a row. Meanwhile, Glenorchy's untouchable aura at KG5 is starting to dim. Two losses in two games at home, teams are now lining up to break their own drought. This round, it's Lauderdale. It hasn't won there since round two, 2012. We've been working on some transition stuff at training, um, sort of mainly sort of uh, in the D50, that's where we've been turning the ball over a bit. We'll talk about our record at home, um, but we, we know where we sit as a footy club, we've got a different group, um, we've got some challenges that we face at the moment. Despite the talk, Glenorchy is favourite, although some big names remain sidelined. Again, different look team this week and we're just about effort. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. The Norky Knights' dream run in the Lacquer Seljak Cup has been a talking point for the competition, but the side is staying cool ahead of its semi-final clash with Launceston City. The winner will be joined by either Olympia Warriors or Hobart Zebras in the big dance. Glenorchy has relished its underdog tag in the Laco Seljak Cup, so much so the coach doesn't want to be seen any differently against the struggling Launceston City. We play in the second division, they play in the Premier League, so... That says it all. The Knights blew apart Metro 9-0 in its last game, while Launceston City languishes in last place of the NPL. Glenorchy's coach says it would be incredible to go all the way, and with a full team to choose from, he might just do it. I got a headache to, you know, who to keep out. Basically, I've got 18 play 20 players are training. Whoever wins will face tough as nails competition in the final. Olympia Warriors and Hobart Zebras will set upon each other with new coaches, but an old rivalry. You've got to be conscious with the firepower of uh, Olympia. The first goal will dictate whether we stay on the offence. It's about implementing you know, what I want in the game. Um, and if we do that, then you know, we can go up against any teams. Kenny Weston believes players are responding to his style of coaching after he recently replaced Ian Shaw. I've seen immediate um, improvement and I think, you know, because I've gone in there and set the bar higher for them, you know, so they've got to reach that. Interestingly, Olympia has chosen to host the fixture at KG5, Hobart's home ground. The wider pitch is meant to suit the Warriors' style of play. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Good evening. 
It's been a mostly fine day around the state with some cloud along the north and east coasts. It's reached 6 degrees in Hobart and Burnie, 18 in Launceston and 17 in Devonport. 19 degrees was the state's high at Strawn. It was 17 on King and Flinders Islands, 16 at Lowhead, St Helens and Grove, 14 at Friendly Beaches and 10 degrees at Lyoweenie. Here we can see a slow-moving low-pressure system to the south of Adelaide with a trough extending north. East of that trough is a large area of cloud and rain over the southeast of the mainland which is moving slowly south. Closer in, low cloud over the east and southeast of the state with lines of mid-level cloud through the north. Tomorrow there's a trough along the New South Wales and Victorian coasts as well as through Bass Strait and a high remains over the Tasman. East to northeasterly winds 20 to 30 knots, shifting north to northwesterly through the afternoon and evening. Swells to 2.5 metres in the west and south. With all that wet weather tomorrow, there's a severe weather warning for heavy rainfall on the northwest coast, as well as the north coast, east coast, and central plateau districts. And a road weather alert for parts of the northwest coast, central north, northeast, central plateau, midlands, and east coast districts. There's a flood watch current for all northern river basins and a strong wind warning for northern, eastern and southern coastal waters between Sandy Cape and Low Rocky Point. 16 degrees in Hobart tomorrow, rain developing, 14 for Medina and Oatlands. Launceston, a rainy 16, heavy rain for Devonport, also 16, Liawini 10 degrees. Burnie, heavy rain, 17 degrees, 17 for Strawn also, Marawa 16. That heavy rain will hit St Helens and Swansea too, both 17, Orford 16. Looking ahead to Sunday, rain about the southeast, clearing early morning, showers about the north and west with some possible thunderstorms about the southeast coast. Monday, showers in the west and far south, clearing early, fine elsewhere apart from a few developing showers in the north and west later in the day. Rain on Tuesday, tending to showers in the afternoon and clearing in the southeast. And now let's take a look at the rest of the country tomorrow. Showers for Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne and Brisbane. Rain for Sydney and Canberra. But if you're looking to stay dry, head up to Darwin or Alice Springs where it should be a sunny day. And so right now in Hobart, it's 13 degrees and cloudy. Launceston, 12 and cloudy. Devonport, the rain has already begun, 15 degrees. Thanks, Joe. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that, Bridge. That's all from the news team for now. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you in about half an hour with us.